Lapuka, an ancient fairy creature from old Irish folklore, one of the more feared of the fairy folk. Considered a trickster and enjoys getting up to mischief whenever it can. So much so that tales of the puka will vary depending on the county of Ireland the story originates from. As a trickster, the puka is a shapeshifter and can take any form it wishes. In County Down, it will usually take the form of a small, deformed goblin. In Leash, a giant hairy boogeyman. In Waterford, a giant eagle. These, to name but a few. While all these forms seem very different, and may be easily mistaken as different creatures, a puka will always have three common features. First, black hair or fur. Second, glowing golden or red eyes. And most importantly, no matter what form the puka takes, it will have the power of human speech. Though it may prefer to play tricks or scare people at night, a puka does also enjoy then taking human form to have a good chat. Sometimes even providing advice and prophecies for the next year. The puka may say he knows you or your family, and may even discuss actual facts about them that you would consider private that no one else should know. But by this time, you would already be under the puka's spell, and one will willingly engage in conversation, losing track of time. As it is not until after the conversation has ended that you will question who it was you were speaking to and where he had come from. However, even though the puka likes to talk, it also enjoys suddenly leaving. A puka will never say goodbye, just suddenly vanish without a trace or a sound, leaving you to wonder if the conversation just had was real or imagined. The puka is also highly linked with the festival of sound, or Halloween as it is known today. In ancient Ireland, Saun was a festival at the end of the harvest season, when the last of the harvest was taken in from the fields. It was believed that the puka kept close watch over farmlands and would protect these lands to ensure a good harvest for the following year. But only if a share of the harvest was left for the puka to enjoy for itself. So if ever you see a field freshly harvested, but notice a few stray stalks of crop still left behind, this has likely been left for the puka's share and if the puka did not get his share, then it would see to it that it damaged the property of the farmer in some way, or even made the soil infertile for the following harvest season. This may also be part of the origins of the current tradition of trick-or-treat at Halloween. For if the puka did not get its treat from the crop, it would play a trick on the farmer. November 1st, the day after Halloween, was also considered Puka's Day, the one day of the year that the Puka was expected to behave. But one of the most common forms a Puka may take is that of a large black horse with glowing red eyes. In this form, a puka loves to offer rides to weary travelers it finds at night. But be cautious, should you ever accept a ride from a puka, its intentions will be to give you the wildest, most terrifying journey possible. Knocking over fences, jumping over obstacles, making death-defying leaps. 
They will not let you disembark until dawn has broken, and will then throw you off its back, still left to make your own way home from wherever it left you. The only person said to have been able to tame and ride Apuka successfully was the High King of Ireland, Green Maru. Said to have made a magical saddle from three strands of Apuka's tail, the king was able to mount the demon steed, and when the Puka tried to throw the king from its back, Green Brew was able to hold on until the Puka became exhausted and surrendered to his will. The king then extracted two promises from the Puka. The first, that it would no longer destroy a person's property again, and the second, that it would never again attack an Irishman. However, all other nationalities were exempt. Unless it was an Irishman who was drunk or out with evil intent. The latter of which, it was allowed to attack even more fiercely than before. While the Puka is said to have agreed to these terms, it seems to have broken its promise after the king passed away, as mysterious attacks on property and sober travellers on their way home continue to this day.